Hello, my name is Ben McNamee. And I'm Ryan Barney. And we are presenting the synthesis and characterization of carbon-based and transition metal quantum dots on behalf of Belfort High School. So what are quantum dots? Quantum dots are man-made nanoscale crystals that can transport electrons. When UV light hits them, they emit light of various colors based on their sizes. And as you can see down at the bottom, whenever a blue light would hit a size two quantum dot, it'll be a bluish color and a two and a half would be green. And as it gets bigger, uh, the colors will start to change to an orange and then a red. These artificial semiconductor nanoparticles that have been have found applications in composites, solar cells, and fluorescent biological labels. So what is our motivation for doing this project? And that motivation is to help in the application of cancer diagnosis. So quantum dots have ex excellent optical properties, and because of their high brightness threshold, their resistance to photo bleaching and tunable emission spectra, quantum dots have been used Quantum dots can be used to track cancer and through the lymph nodes and tumors through targeting. So what we think here is that um, this, this rat is being injected with um, qu carbon quantum dots. And whenever these quantum dots come in, it um, targets these tumor cells and it lights up. So materials, um, in order to synthesize the carbon quantum dots that we've been using, we've uh, been using a 300 milliliter flask pipettes uh, sugar, which is glucose, and that has been the source of our carbon. Uh, sodium bicarbonate, sodium hydroxide, distilled water, a black light, and a triple beam balance. And then here's our setup with our glucose and our sodium bicarbonate, and then with our flasks and our balance in the back. So our experimental procedure, um, what we first do is we make a 500 millimolar solution of sugar and water. And then we make um, two 500 millimolar solutions. The first of sodium hydroxide and water, and the second of sodium bicarbonate and water. And then we take each of these solutions, the sodium hydroxide and the sodium bicarbonate, and we mix them with the two sugar water solutions. So um, then we let these solutions sit for two hours or 48 hours. And then once we do that, we observe these solutions under a black light and look for their colors, see if the quantum dots have formed and what sizes they are. And then after that, we place these solutions in a UV spectrometer for a reading of their absorbance. So what we have here, we have our glucose being measured out. And then we also measure out our um, um, sodium bicarbonate and sodium hydroxide. And then we place each of these in 200 milliliters of water. And we mix them up to get a nice, pure um, solution. And then we'll mix the two together. And then once we let it sit for 48 hours, you can see here when we shine a black light on it, it gives off a greenish tint. So based on the slide before, that means that um, this tint is showing a lower reading, lower, um, uh, lower size quantum dot. So successful studies, Ben mentioned this a few slides ago, but these rats that we've been talking about, um, if you inject them with quantum dots, the carbon quantum dots, the uh, quantum dots will coat the cancer cells. And then once you use uh, a PET scan, they'll show up and you can figure out where the tumor is at and target that. And what we're hoping with this is that uh, the carbon quantum dots, when they attack and obviously show the light, we are hoping that we can get a more, um, more targeted cancer treatment compared to chemo, which goes through the entire body and damages all kinds of cells. Hopefully we can see where the cancer is and hopefully we can see it before tumors start. There's many cancers that you can't really see until the tumors are too big and it's too late. So hopefully we can see the individual cells and then once a tumor begins at a very small size, um, we could maybe incorporate this into um, you know, annual or um, biannual um, diagnoses for um, cancer patients, like genetic cancer patients and stuff like that, and hopefully see um, an improvement in cancer research. So our data here is from the um, solutions we've made in the past. So the start off is with water over here and that's our control. And there you can see water has a very high absorbance rate and it has a uh, decently um, long wavelength, pretty short and compared to others, but has a compared to our quantum dots, it has a large wavelength. So here's our 500 millimolar um, sodium bicarbonate. And this solution has a lot of activity between 200 and 300 uh, nanometers. And its absorbance rate is pretty high. It's decently high. It goes up to about 0.3 absorbance. So hopefully um, that's what we've gotten our best results from is these um, sodium bicarbonate and that along with that in the color as well. So here's 500 millimolar of sodium hydroxide. 
And as you can tell here by looking at these peaks that there's not a lot of activity, but there is a longer activity. So um, you can see the wavelength is a little bit longer with the activity going all the way closer to 400, but its absorbance rate isn't high. We didn't get a much defined color out of that. And over here we have, we decided that because of, we're trying to change the colors, but unfortunately we weren't successful with that yet because of the purity of the carbon. But we have 150 millimolar of sodium bicarbonate. So we uh, diluted it down a little bit and we saw more activity towards the end. So near the 300 um, nanometer wavelength, we saw more activity there and more activity all the way to 400. So it's a longer wavelength and decent amount of absorbance. Um, future methods. So we have been using the carbon quantum dots, but we want to continue our research with that so that we can increase the fluorescence and hopefully get other colors and different sized quantum dots. And we also want to look into metal quantum dots, which uh, can be made using cadmium selenide. And that's this picture down here in the bottom right corner. And as you can see, the colors are a lot more vivid, but the uh, quantum dots itself are also more toxic. So that's something that we'd like to look into. Yes, and with the cadmium um, selenide, um, as you said, they are more defined, but we have to do it in a different lab setting because the fumes that um, this cadmium selenide produces are very toxic. And these cannot be used in cancer research, but they can be used in various other things. Now here is actually a more interesting thing for our carbon quantum dots. So we've been using uh, glucose, which isn't the purest of carbons, but graphite, graphene is a pure carbon. So what we plan on doing is um, using a model after over this experiment, experiment and placing two graphene rods in citric acid and sodium hydroxide and letting these act, the, um, the graphene acts as a semiconductor to produce the quantum dots. And hopefully we can get a more pure quant um, quantum dots from this graphene process and we can range in color. For acknowledgements, we'd like to thank KVEC for this great opportunity and of course the BHS administration for letting us do this project. We appreciate you all and have a good day.